Our guest, our expert, Dr. Suzanne Stewart. Masi Cho, please come to the stage. Thank you for having me. So I'm here to talk about Indigenous knowledges, but I'm here to talk about that in a broader context. So as you already know, I'm a psychologist and a professor. And in that role, I have many people coming to me wanting me to help them with problems in their lives. Patients want me to help them get better so that they can do the things that they want with their lives, get over their symptoms of depression, anxiety, trauma. And students in school come to me and want me to help them do well in their courses. And in fact, they often want me to help them learn how to do better in their lives. Over a decade of research experience around issues like this have demonstrated three key things to me in how to help young people and adults follow their dreams and succeed. So the first of these three important things about how to follow your dreams and succeed is, you ready? Are you holding on to your seats? <laughs> Forget everything you know. Everything you know is actually completely wrong. And that's what is often stopping you from capitalizing on your motivation to do the things you want with your life. I know this sounds ridiculous because all your life people have been telling you, learn things, know things, act from what you know. But the reality is that when we believe things aren't possible or that we can't do things because we've been told that we can't do things, that stops us from even trying to do anything. So I'll give you an example from some of the research I've been doing over the last eight years with Aboriginal youth in downtown Toronto. So I did a study a few years ago um, about youth and education. And when I started the study, I started looking at the literature, at the existing knowledge. And what all of the stats and data out there says about Aboriginal youth and education is very dismal. It says that Aboriginal children and youth have very low rates of graduation, have low rates of literacy, uh, have learning disabilities, have difficulty attending school and staying in school. And many of us may have examples that back up this knowledge that's given to us. But when we actually look at the data on Aboriginal education, uh, attainment and achievement, it seems very true at face value. But a deeper look at this kind of information actually suggests that these claims are made from very specific studies on very specific First Nations communities, which don't actually accurately represent the entire population of Aboriginal people across Canada. Currently existing statistics or knowledge that we have on Aboriginal education and achievement are taken from First Nations communities across Canada which represent currently less than 40% of the youth and child population of Aboriginal people in Canada. The rest of Canada's Aboriginal children and youth live in urban areas or live off reserve. And that includes the Northwest Territories. And those students are students who do well in school, finish high school, go on to university, and even get jobs. And their data is not captured in those statistics that are released by the government and by major studies on education. So what we're really doing is we're focusing on information that we have that's wrong about how Aboriginal students do in school. Why are we focusing on that information that's wrong? Because as consumers, we have swallowed the whole, we have swallowed Pull the statistics and figures about these low rates of, uh, of these low rates of graduation and educational achievement, 
uh, from these particular communities and allowed them to be generalized uh, to all Aboriginal populations. And when we do that, we, we are actually giving in to defeat before we're even at the starting gate. At least that's what a lot of young people that I know think and feel when they're faced with this soul-sapping, self-defeating knowledge. And teachers often come into schools, into classrooms, with that knowledge that Aboriginal students are not smart enough, don't do well, and often fail. So it's fed to teachers, it's fed to students, and all of a sudden people have all this knowledge and information that they can't do well, and then what happens? Somebody, what, what happens? They don't do well. If someone says you're not going to do well, you're, you're probably not going to do well. So, so in other words, don't believe the knowledge that you get about, about anything. <laughs> I'm going to be a little bit blunt there, because some, or maybe even most of it, could be wrong. So here's another example of what you know that might be wrong. And I'm going to use another example from education because education is the place that uh, is supposed to hold the supreme, the supreme position of knowledge in Western society. And that's also the area that I've been working in. So Canadian mainstream education is, as a system has actually harmed and wronged many students by ramming Western-based educational uh, curriculum and pedagogy down the throats of all students, regardless of their cultural background or individual histories. What does this actually mean? L let me sort of explain and unpack this a little bit. Mainstream education does not work for all people. In reality, only a privileged few people who go to school can benefit from its individualist, linear-based model of thinking and learning. So if you have not always done well in school, it's not the failing of a student, it's the failing of the education system because the education system is not tailored to meet the needs of students who don't think in a particular way. Does that make sense? Or do I sound like I'm, I don't know anything? What do you guys think? Some people are nodding, some people are smiling. Got a thumbs up over there. Let me give you another example of how what you know is wrong. For one second, stop listening to your mind. What happens when you stop listening to your mind, when you stop listening to all the things that, that you're saying to yourself inside? You feel something. You feel things in your body. You feel things in your heart. You might even feel things in a place that a lot of people call the spirit. For one thing, psychology, the discipline of psychology, has well established that people in general have a propensity to negative, erroneous thinking. That's a well established tenet of cognitive behavioral psychology. We all have a natural tendency to think erroneous thoughts automatically. Well, isn't that enough ammunition for all of us to stop using our mind to think? If we know that our mind gives us wrong and bad thoughts, negative thoughts for no reason, we know that. Why would we keep listening to something that we know is wrong and negative? Secondly, there are many cultures in the world, specifically indigenous cultures, who believe that many people should make decisions, should not make decisions from the mind. In traditional 
indigenous cultures that I have worked with in my research, there are teachings that the mind is a place of data storage. The mind is a place where we store information that's used for pragmatic tasks like making a bed, brushing your teeth, driving a car. The mind is not the place where we make decisions according to how we should live our life, what we should do, how we should feel, how we should act in situations outside of pragmatic actions. In traditional indigenous knowledges in my work, the mind is understood as something that is wrong for decisions outside of pragmatic action. And it is a place that you keep for action-based decisions. In traditional knowledges, your heart and spirit are the best sources of guidance for what to do with your life and how to get there. The first research project I conducted, and I'm not going to tell you how long ago that was, was guided by an Aboriginal elder from the West Coast. I initially consulted him at the outset of the project, and he told me that the research would go well if I followed my heart. I had no idea what he meant at that time. It wasn't until many years later that I understood what he meant about follow your heart. So let me move on to the second thing that we need to do if we want to follow our dreams and succeed. And that is believe in yourself in terms of who you are and where you came from. My research over the last 10 years with indigenous knowledges and youth and life transitions have shown that when youth have a clear sense of identity, specifically cultural identity, not only do they stay in school, they do well in school and aspire to going to university and beyond. This is very contrary to what the literature says about Aboriginal youth and school and employment outcomes. Identity actually has a very interesting and exciting connection with success in life. And it began in ancient Greece with the dictum to know thyself. And it continues today with youth who are engaged with globalization, with mass media, and who have literally thousands of choices of what they could do and who they could be. But the real question is, why do some youth succeed at finishing school and getting jobs, and why do some not? And that's a big question because it has huge implications economically, socially, and in health. Let me tell you a very abridged story of my life. I grew up without a mother or father beside me because of the history of residential school, and we all know what that is. By age 12, I was in and out of foster care. By age 14, I was living on the streets. By age 21, I was a well-seasoned and well-experienced and never-caught criminal. According to psychology, this was not a good trajectory. According to psychology my, and my demographics of being both female and Aboriginal, I had a higher chance of statistically heading for jail, a lifetime of homelessness, or being missing or murdered on the streets of Canada. What happened next? Well, I decided to follow my dreams. Let me move on to the last point that will help young people follow their dreams and succeed in our communities. And that is, learn how to be a trailblazer. What does this mean? This means taking risks, being creative, seeing no limits and no boundaries, and never giving up. Stop asking people for permission to learn, to change, and to grow. 
Indigenous people who hold the indigenous knowledges through colonization have been silenced and have been put into a position where they need to ask permission to be themselves, to know who they are, to act as cultural beings, to act from the traditional knowledges, which really come from the spirit, not from the mind. I conducted a study a few years ago with Aboriginal graduate students because I wanted to know what helped them succeed in school. Too much research, in my view, had focused on the dysfunctions and the problems of students. And I wanted to start a program of research that talked about the strengths and solutions that Aboriginal students had in school. Results from that study showed that successful graduate students were those who made new roads for other students, who took risks by bringing their traditional knowledges into the classroom, sharing them with their instructors and their fellow students. This often represented a turning point for these students who then began to feel good about themselves and feel like they had a place within higher education and within society in general. Being a trailblazer and taking risks means never giving up, never ever giving up. And not giving up means that you have supports around you. It means that you allow yourself to become part of a community who can support you in taking those risks and not giving up. I wanna end off by going back to my own story. In my early 20s, I began to learn who I was as an Aboriginal woman. I grew tired of petty crime and major partying. I was ready to grow up and get a life. I woke up one day and decided, now don't get too excited here, people. I decided I wanted to become a psychologist. I wanted to figure out myself and help other people do the same people I saw in my communities who were hurting, people in my family who seemed to never recover from things that happened intergenerationally. How did I go from street kid to psychologist to research chair? Well, I went after my dreams and I succeeded by following those steps that I shared with you today. Thank you. Dr. Stewart Masicho for your courageous presentation. Masicho.